And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, last week I did a, a comparison of the new When I Dream to the older one. And I said, it's a great game, check out my review, and then realized I never actually did a review for When I Dream. Which is crazy, because I love this game. So, I figured, let's fix that. Z did a review of the game, but I want to give my opinion on it. So let's take a look here closer at a game that I love, a great party game, When I Dream. Here's how it plays. So first of all, based on the number of players, you're going to pick a number of Sandman, Boogeyman, and Fairy cards. So let's say it's a seven player game, we would have two Sandman, two Boogeyman, and three Fairies. The numbers are going to change based on the number of players. One person's going to be the Dreamer, and the Dreamer's going to go around the table. When you're the Dreamer, you're going to put this mask on. Once you put the mask on, the top card of this deck of cards in the middle is going to be put on the bottom. and. We're going to put this on top here to cover up one of the words in the card. The orientation of the card doesn't matter except for there's two words on each card. So this is Hotel and Melon. These cards are going to be passed out to each player that's in the game with the remaining card that no one gets placed near the board. Now, the timer is going to be started. It's a two minute timer and each person is going to give one word clues to the dreamer about the card. So maybe if I'm getting someone to guess hotel, I might say travel, and the next person might say stay, and the next person might say uh, whatever, whatever the clues they might get for hotel. At any point, the dreamer can stop as they're hearing the clues and say hotel. If they get it right, it's put on this side, the light side of the board. Here's fork, and maybe they guess spoon. That's incorrect, so it would go on this side. Here the word is panda, and they might guess panda. And so as the game, as the dream goes by, they're going to be guessing clues that are right and incorrect. When the timer runs out, the guesser may, they don't have to, guess the last clue that they've been listening to. Once these clues have been out, then the dreamer must tell the story of their dream. So they might say, in my dream, I was riding bareback on a panda across the field when I saw the Hotel California, and there a giant spoon, because they think spoons in the dream, was holding some radish and some electricity, and it threw them at me. And a rhinoceros, which again they thought the hippopotamus was, was chasing after me, and they finished their dream. After that, everyone scores up. So it depends what you are. If you are a fairy, you're going to get one point for each card on the good side. If you are the boogeyman, you get one card for each point on the bad side. If you're the sandman, it depends on the difference between them. If they're the same, in this case there's three on each side, the sandman would get three plus two. If there's a one card difference between them, well that's not a one card difference, but let's say there was a one card difference like this, they would get the larger pile, so in this case they would get four. If there's more than a one card difference, then they would get the smaller pile. So their scoring is a little bit different than everyone else's, but it's not that complex. The dreamer gets one point for each correct one they have, plus two if they used all the correct words in their dream that they made up. The points are right here, you'll be taking points and then it passes to the next person. So you can see as everyone is giving their clues, obviously the boogeymen want to give bad clues. The problem is if your clue is totally erroneous, the dreamer is going to be able to figure that out fairly quickly and they'll just start ignoring your clues from then on. The Sandman is going to be trying to give clues that it balance things out, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But both of these players are going to have to be a little sneaky trying to give clues that mess things up. At the end of the game, everyone's going to count up their points. Most points is the winner. The components for this game are absolutely fantastic. We'll start with the cards. The cards. Holy smokes. Now, uh, every time I've met people, they say, wait a minute, these pictures don't matter. It's only the words. You're right, the pictures don't matter. 
but they add so much flavor and so much to the game. It really makes the whole thing fun. I mean, these cards could double as Dixit cards. They're really cool. They have a nice mix, and every single one of them is double-sided. So you have a ton of replayability in this game, even if you know every word. Like, look, I mentioned Spoon earlier. Spoon is in the game. These guys are fighting with spoons. And so just lovely artwork. There's a lot of different artists who did the artwork. The rule book itself gives credit to all the different artists. And even though there's different artists in the game, they managed to make a cohesive product. The other components, this bed, this plastic bed, the fact that the board fits right around it, the point tokens all being different shapes of stars, moon, and you know, that's really neat. And then the box, everything fits nicely in the box. It has a nice spot for the timer. It has spots for the cards. I especially like any of these inserts where the cards are like this, and you simply just push down to get them out. So, and then here you keep all the different scoring tokens. This is just an A plus in component quality, as we've come to expect from Repos. Okay, When I Dream, fantastic game. This is one of my favorite party games to come out in a long time. I love how this game works because this game is a fun party game with the cool artwork and it's funny to hear people's dreams, right? So it has that fun, funny part of a party game, but it's also a really well thought out party game. Now, if you are the fairy, the fairy is the easiest thing to do. You're just trying to give out as good clues as you possibly can. Sometimes trying to counter the clues that the other guys are giving out, but that's pretty simple. If you're the dreamer, that's a little bit more tricky. You're listening to each person after a while, you're like, Susan, there's no way she is uh, a fairy. She's definitely wrong, so I ignore her clues from now on. And the boogeymen are even harder to catch. Now it's, I mean, or the sandman. The boogeymen are hard because with the boogeymen, you have to sit there and it's the hard, I think it's the hardest role in the game. You don't want to be too obviously wrong. Although sometimes near the end of the game, you're just giving out bad clues, but you want to listen to the clues that other people are, are giving and give a clue that's similar, but hopefully leads them in a wrong direction. Now, while you're giving out the clues, you are never allowed to give any kind of indication to the person, to the dreamer. You can't, you can't tell them if they got it right or wrong. You just put it on one of the sides. They have no idea if they got it right or wrong. You can't be like, <sighs> or woo, you can't do that at all. Um, but the glares, because as you're playing, the fairies pretty much quickly know who the bad guys are and they're looking at them like, but you can't say anything. And it's hilarious at that point in time. So I think the game does tend to favor the fairies to some degree, but the boogeymen, are being helped also by the Sandmen, right? So the Sandmen are also trying to give bad clues or misleading clues, I guess, is a better thing. And because of that, this game has a cleverness about it as well as hilariousness, especially with the dream. Now, I would say a good half the dreams, people don't remember everything because you're doing the memory plus this, but sometimes you only get a few right. So you got the, if you remember those few words you got right, just by luck, you, know, you it works out too. As I said, components and artwork, fantastic. This game has gone over well every time I've taught it. It's a fun game to play. It is a fun game to watch. Just highly recommended on every level when I dream. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.